right, it's time, so let's begin. Hi, my name is Seth Baskin, and I'm the National Sales Manager here at Accountants World. I want to thank you for attending this webinar, and looking at the uh, turnout, it's fantastic. I promise you, it'll be worth your time. And how do I know that? Well, last month, we did the same webinar with Jim, and the feedback was so overwhelmingly positive, we asked him if he would, wouldn't mind doing it again, and he graciously said yes. Today's webinar is all about you. Today is a day we wanted you to hear from a colleague of yours, Jim Szynski. We wanted Jim to share the specifics on how he's running his practice in a way where his profits have grown 35% in three years, and he hasn't added any staff. The key theme from Jim's presentation will be efficiency and why and how he uses Accountants World's products to gain those, gain those efficiencies. I'd like to share a quick story that illustrates just how efficient Jim runs his firm. I'm going to tell this story with lots of trepidation because I know what many of you may be thinking as you hear this, that it may not be true. Around the week leading up to October 15th deadline, we tried reaching Jim to finalize the content of his first webinar. There are probably many of you on the phone we tried reaching also, but we couldn't, and if we did reach you, most likely you had choice words for us when you got us on the phone. We couldn't reach Jim either, but for a different reason. It wasn't because he was swamped with work due to the deadline, but Jim didn't take our call because he was on a cruise. That's what this webinar is all about. It's about how to do more work in less time with minimum staff. So let's get to our agenda. Well, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Accountants World, and then Jim is going to actually run, talk about how he runs his practice. That's going to be almost all of the webinar. Then we're going to go over pricing, and Jim will answer questions that you may have with, uh, if there's enough time remaining. So let's talk a little bit about who we are. I'm going to take two minutes to tell you about Accountants World, and then, as I said, I'm going to introduce Jim. We build only cloud-based software products strictly for accountants. We've been in business for over 30 years. You should know that we never sell directly to your clients because we believe they are your most important asset and only you should deal with them and profit from them. So you won't have to worry about us advertising to your clients to provide services such as payroll processing, which is now such an easy service to provide and so very lucrative. Your clients are your clients, and we won't use you as a marketing tool to get to them. We want to be your partner for success. When you win, we win. Those aren't just words. In a moment, when Jim discusses how he runs his practice, you'll know exactly what we mean by that. Now, why do we build products only for the cloud? Simply because it's the best and most efficient way for you to deliver your services to your clients, especially when you use our suite of products that are designed to work seamlessly together. We build solutions from the ground up, so we have no legacy issues or speed issues. With our products, you'll have a cost-effective virtual office, which means you'll have access to all your software anytime, anywhere, from any device. Plus, you won't have to worry about different versions of the same program, no costly upkeep of computer systems, and most importantly, the ability to better collaborate with your clients. Later in the presentation, you'll see that our products have won the highest ratings from industry analysts. This is who we are. I know every day each of you gets calls from sales reps telling you similar reasons of why you should do business with their company. Today, we wanted you to hear from a colleague in his own words how what I just told you actually works. It is now my privilege to turn the program over to Jim Szynski. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, about myself. Let me put something straight out there. I am not a professional speaker. I do not do this for a living. I do not stand on a stage. The, the base way I can say it, I am one of you. I'm an accountant. I deal with small business and personal taxation. Um, I sit at my desk. I roll up my sleeves, and, and we process work. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear right from the get-go. Uh, so if I stumble a little or trip on my words, that's because, you know, this is not scripted. This is not me reading off a teleprompter. I'm just basically speaking and talking to you about what I, who I am and what I do. Um, 2015 was my 30th tax season. Uh, my niche or the niche of my firm is basically small business. Um, you know, 
clients that are big enough that they have compliance issues, have you know payroll, bookkeeping, accounting problems, but they're really too small to hire their own bookkeeper. So what happens? It falls upon John or Jane Q, small business owner, to try to do it themselves. So as you see by the uh, slide, you know my firm is basically 44% tax planning and preparation. We do uh, about 1,100 returns, 900 individual, 200 business, uh, trust, the state, other. I have about 200 total accounting clients, 160 of them, uh, you know, actually after the fact write up. Payroll does make up 15% of my practice. And to define payroll, we do about 15,000 checks for our clients a year and about 800 W-2s. Next slide, Len. Now, you go about, well, how do I do this and what do I do it with? Right now, my company, during the regular season, not tax season, operates on a total of five people. Two accountants, my father-in-law and myself, two bookkeepers, one administrative staff. Five total. Tax season, yes, we bring in one, one and a half full-time equivalents, strictly clerical, because I have an automated tax process uh, of scanning and populating, uh, but that's a whole different discussion. So, But during the regular off-season, meaning you know ordinary season, uh, this is what I do. And I can actually tell you, because it's really not a secret anymore um, in my area, but I'm in the process of merging firms with another firm a few towns over. You know, They have tried to woo me for years because I'm going to be director of operations. Uh, they can never, they've never believed the volume of work that my office turns out with the limited amount of staff we have. Um, and it all comes down to processes and proper use of technology. Len, next slide. So let's get to the issue of why I switched my software. Because obviously before Accountants World, I was using something else. Um, back in the 90s, I used strictly a Thomson Reuters product user. I uh, used everything that they had, every, every piece of software. Um, and they're still my go-to solution for my uh, for soft, um, tax software, tax prep, uh, depreciation. So I still you know, am, am associated with Thomson Reuters. Uh, but I was getting very troubled because uh, I work very closely. Just like you know, Lennon talked about you know, uh, Accountants World being our strategic partner, our technology partner. Well, I feel like I'm the strategic partner to my clients, helping them run their business better letting them spend their time working on their business, doing the thing that they love, the things that make them money, allowing us you know, as their accountants to help them run their back office. So you needed collaboration. You needed products that you can work together with. And the stuff that I was getting from Thomson Reuters just wasn't there. All right? You know, clients come to us with their problems, and we need to provide them solutions. You know, not just uh, uh, like a reactive type of, here, do this, we do it, hand it back, but really a proactive, where you listen to what, what bothers them, what's causing them pains, and, and you develop a solution, a process to handle their works. So, like I said, the Thomson um, Accountants Word products allowed me to do this where Thomson Reuters fell short. Um, I was looking for something that was scalable, an automated system that I controlled, I set up, I controlled the permissions, um, you know, right from, you know, who can access what, right down to the chart of accounts. Uh, it's all set up. Almost every one of my clients has the identical chart of accounts with just a few variances. That makes my operating efficiency so much easier rather than having, you know, every time you get a client send their work in, they created, you know, several new accounts. They're not numbered. They're out of sequence. They're all over the place. I set it up to what you know, pretty much standard. And when they hear that, listen, instead of going and subscribing to a piece of software that you have to set up and you have to populate, we're basically just going to send them a login to a pre-set up system that I already have set up for them. They they think I'm like the best thing since sliced bread. So what about the system? A, it has to be cloud-based. Um, everything we're doing today is moving to the cloud. Uh, last week, I was at the Thomson Reuters Users con uh, Conference down in Orlando. They're rolling out an entirely new platform. I think it's called Onvio, where they're moving virtually all of their products into the cloud. So guess what? If, if Thomson Reuters is seeing that and moving their products there, Accountants World has always been there. So who's the leader? Efficiencies. As Lenny said, I can access my work 24-7 any place I have an internet connection. To me, that is efficient. I don't have to worry about technology and remote logins and updates. It, it's just always there, always backed up, always available for me when I need to work or when I want to work. 
and as I mentioned before, collaboration. Um, the, the work we're doing, if you're small business accountants, you're, you're collaborating with your clients. You're sitting there and helping them develop processes um, to be able to get their work done. And in general, from my point of view, from what I found out over the years, uh, they want an electronic checkbook. They don't want, they're not looking for an accounting software, a bookkeeping software. They're looking for an electronic and efficient way for them to pay bill, track bills, pay bills, and keep track of their bank balance. This is what we can now provide them, you know, collaboratively. And, you know, we both have live access to the system. You know, if a client has a question, we can both go in together, go over things. Um, it, it's just that. And regarding efficiencies, no more of these file transfers. No more here. I'll get you. I'll send you an accountant's copy, and I have to get it back to you. All of that is 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 history. It's like you know, we need to be in the Jetsons era, no longer in the Flintstones era. Control. I know control is a very you know big type of a, a word. We, you know, the illusion of control. But as I said before, if we're setting up their system and hosting it for them through Accountants World, we set it up the way we ideally want it done. We're providing them the instructions of how to utilize it. You're eliminating 80% of the headaches that they, the clients then bring back across our threshold when they're using the system that they own, that they run, and then they set up. So, you know, deadlines. You know, our lives, our profession, everything is deadline driven. Um, we need tools that help us meet these deadlines. You know, you know, for instance, uh, just the way our tax season has, has evolved over the last couple of years, I'm sure you, most of you will agree with me that in general, the personal tax season really doesn't start until mid-February now. By the time clients are getting their documents, getting the documents to us, easily mid-February before you really start in earnest, if not even the third week of February, before you start doing personal returns. Some people look at that as like a challenge and a headache. It is when it comes to the personal side, but you got to look at it as an opportunity on the small business side. What do I mean by that? The way I run things is, um, and suggest running things, work on your clients month to month. Every month comes, you cl work on, reconcile, close out the prior month. That way when December gets there, uh, January gets there, really all we're doing is finishing up December's work, tying up some year-end numbers, uh, you know, verifying inventories, loan balances, etc. And we're ready to go to tax. So I use that pushback of the personal tax season starting de deadline or date as an opportunity to get as many business returns done as I can. So you, you have to really, really almost now modify your processes to really what the industry is, is handing us. And through this collaborative effort of working with the clients, you already have the system in place so that you can get your work done and reconciled to use that February 15th window that I discussed. Next slide, Len. So change, how I made the change. And there's that big, big scary word, change. <laughs> You know, how do I do this? I mean, the first thing that we have to do is listen. Listen to our clients. Listen to our staff. You have to listen and hear what, what, what bothers them, what hurts them, where are their pain. And like I said, I think I mentioned before, it is our job to our clients as their, as their strategic business partner, to our staff as, as the boss and the leader, to provide them solutions. Be that leader. You know, listening, if you solve their problems and you deliver them a solution instead of just like, hey, everybody, we're making a change for the sake of change. People don't want to hear that. People are set in their ways. People have learned how to do it one way and they want to do it that way for the rest of their life and career. We all know that's not reasonable. I mean, I remember back uh, mid-2000s, um, I think I started voluntarily e-filing returns I think 2002, 2003, right when they came out the 8979s and the PIN forms. Before that, with the 8453s, and we had to send in uh, uh, signature pages with W2s. I said, "What? What was the difference? I e-file and still have to send paperwork in? Not, not efficient." But once they went to a true paperless system, I jumped right on that. I think it was two to three years later, at least in the state of New Jersey, they came in and mandated any paper pair who did over 200 returns must e-file all the returns. Done. How many associates, friends of mine, CPAs, you know, tax repairs in the area call me up, Jim, what are you going to do about that? Uh, how, how are you going to handle this? I said, well, what do you mean? I've been e-filing for two years already. And they were floored. It's change is always here. 
So that's where we have to work towards it. So how did I get my clients to change? Again, I, I listened to them. I listened to what they needed to get done and what their problems were and provided them the solution. And the solution was an accountant's world product of um, accounting power, accounting relief, where they're getting what I set up for them, an electronic checkbook. How do I get my staff to change? Well, I listen to them too. You know, uh, a lot of the older systems we used, there were a lot of manual processes involved. There were things just that didn't work right. Bank rec functions that always seemed to get, you know, uh, uh, messed up for one reason or another. And it just didn't work efficiently. So you listen to them. And when it comes time, you don't just pitch it as change. You pitch it as, I'm solving a problem. We're solving a problem. All right? It, it, really, the time is now. I mean, th think of, look at how you're doing your work right now, the processes you're using, the software that you're using. I mean, think of it, you're driving your car like, like you have a tire that's going flat. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to keep pulling over at the service station, you know, every couple hundred miles, putting more air in it and just, you know, limping along? Or are you going to just stop, fix the darn tire, new tire, patch the tire, whatever it takes to fix it, but fix the problem? That's really another issue we're talking about when it comes to change. Are we just going to just limp along and treat the symptoms, or are we going to fix the problem? I always go and vote for fixing the problem. All right? It's um, you talk about implementation. Uh, what are the steps? Well, obviously you have to buy new software. You have to take some time a little bit to learn the setup. Uh, but I can assure you the learning curve is so simple. Um, it, I have clients that literally get onto the system in less than a half hour. They're up and entering bills and writing checks, and they love it. But best practices. Let's talk about, you know, to me right now is the perfect time for an accountant to make a implement a software change because depending where your clients are in their write up during the year uh, you can convert some of them now every preparer every person you know a processor in your office convert two or three clients mid year right now get used to the system set up the system make your perfect chart of accounts get it also you're very used and accustomed accustomed to using the system January 1st is right around the bend. When that comes, you convert the rest of your clients over. So now you actually, you know, can do it in full, you know, have your own internal process set up that, all right, this is, we convert, we import the data from the old system, it's all tied out, new chart of accounts, ready to go. And everybody's going to be working on it. That's basically what I did in that time frame, and it worked very, very good for me. Um, you know, what was the end result? I can honestly tell you, you know, this is more so from my client, uh, not from the clients. Uh, they're just thankful that you've you've provided them an easier way to do things. But from the staff, probably my head processor at the time when we made the the conversion was my biggest adamant fighter on this because she was, you know, very happy with just the way things were going. Um, even though there was troubles, she had her pattern down. After we went through the conversion, after we were up and running, the the statement was an apology for giving me such a hard time and then the comment why didn't we do this years ago you know my colleagues I can tell you change is very difficult all right change hurts it, it, it probably will hurt but we got to know change is inevitable so don't fight it embrace it plan for it by planning what we do I mean our lives are planning you know the old adage if you fail to plan you plan to fail you know but if you mitigate you can mitigate the pain by planning for change, all right? Don't let wait till change is forced upon you. Implement it according to your plan and your time frame on your terms because it's it's going to happen. I mean, like I said, you, you had mandatory e-filing. You have, um, you know, no more paper tax payments uh, to the government. Everything's by e-payment. -E These are all changes that were forced upon many, many of us practitioners. Um, I read a survey once, and I really believe it was dead on accurate which was uh, regarding change, implementing new systems. They say that less one, than 1% 1 of all accountants are considered to be on the cutting edge of technology, less than 1%. Up to 3% are innovative but not on the cutting edge. You know, they're, they're, they're looking for new things out there. They don't jump right on it, but usually within the first year, they're, they're implementing and making a change. Um, up to 15% will then implement it 
once it looks like it's something that's here to stay. You know, it, it's clearly the obvious way that you have to go. 15%, the you know, up to 15% of our profession then does it. That leaves 85%. Out of that, that 85%, when do they make the change? When their backs are against the wall and they have no other choice because it's saying, this is how it's going to be done from now on. You, you know, my colleagues, you can guys can decide where do you want to be in that curve. I, I don't want to be in the 1%. I'm generally in the 3%. I try to monitor and see where things, things are going. Um, you know, but at least be in the 15%. At least recognize what uh, the changes that are occurring in our industry and what's here to stay, and I can tell you, cloud-based computing is here to stay, and is it's not the it's not the technology of tomorrow; it's the technology of today. So that's how I, you know, in the concept of change. Lenny, next slide. So, how do I work with my clients using accounting power? First, I got to say is that I, I I myself consider myself to be a very proactive accountant, not reactive, like I spoke before. Um, there are clients that we are actually, you know, they're live, uh, you know, work work around. We're their live accountant. They do not have, um, you know, the outsourced CFO model. All right, they do not have anything internal. They don't have any kind of internal uh, people or systems. They outsource it all to us, and then that can range all the way to the after the fact write up, as traditionally most of us do. And then there is that, you know collaboration in between all right the client has live access to the system they do a certain amount of work and then you take over and complete it but that's the beauty on the system is that you can sit down and decide where do you put that barometer where do you put that needle how much does the client do then when do you take over and finish up then finish the work through tax aid, you know through tax prep that is the key and, and that needle is easily moved with this system because you have some clients earlier on, they may want to do more because they don't want to pay as much. But as they get busier and time goes on, they, they want to do less and less and turn more over to you. This system is easily scalable and adjustable. The one recommendation I could definitely match, and, and this is a problem with so many other systems, is clients have the control of it. And they say, well, I need you, you know, I'll do steps one through three, but I need you to come in and do four and five, but then hand it back to me for six and seven. You do eight, I do nine. That is nothing but an absolute mess and a disaster. The proper way is you sit down and you de determine when is the handoff. They start from you know entering bills, paying bills, writing checks, up to what point, and then we take over. That is efficiency. You know you really have to run your practice like it's a franchise. You know not that you're going out and franchising yourself, but you have a manual. This is how we do things. All right, you have to learn, and I'm, I know this is hard to hear. We can't be everything to everybody. You find the niche that works best for you, and the hardest thing that any anything to do, and I know some clients that still accountants that can't do it, is to tell clients to say, "Listen, I just don't do it that way. I can't, you know, maybe another client uh, accountant, somebody that doesn't have work, somebody that will do anything for anybody, will be a better suited to help you. But if you sit down and set up your your efficient system of processing." you're going to be more efficient and efficiency equals profitability. How does it help me get my work done faster? As I mentioned before, I process each month to month, every client's month to month, and then process to close the month. So we're we're in November now, November 20, you know, whatever today is, I apologize. But on, I can literally tell you that by the third day of the month, I have easily 20 to 40 clients reconciled, tied out, month closed, because of the efficiencies built in to the accounting power system. Um, we live in a techno technological age. Data is easily obtainable. Very few clients have to wait for them to get a bank statement in the mail, get the bank statement to me. I have clients sending me PDF bank statements first and second day of the month. I have, through the bank feed functions, uh, the ability to go in and download the transactions right from the client's bank account. These, this use of technology is making us far more efficient and be able to get work done faster. And, and let's even talk quickly about something that's not even a, a technological issue, but just a, a simple fact of life. If you're working, I'm working in November now, working on the month of October, and I see a couple transactions, I'm not sure exactly what they are. If I call my client up and say, hey, Sal, um, I saw you did this, this, and this. 
I guarantee you, without even a hesitation or a pause, Sal will rattle off exactly what each of those are and what he did and what, what the answer was. Now let's go back to how most people, most accounts that I see handle their work. It's November. They may be working on January and February. It, it, could, be, it could be next March, and you're working on January and February of the prior year, and you see some uh, transactions that you're really not sure you know, what, what the deal is about. Them. So you contact Sal, and Sal goes, what? When? What, what, what are you talking about? So Sal has no clue. Time is So much time has passed. He doesn't remember. And then it's going to take him, what, not days, probably weeks to get back to you because he's got to research it, look it up, refresh his own mind. So what happens? The process stops. You need to create an efficient system that just continually processes. And even if they get back to you later in the day, fine, you put one client on the side of your desk, move on to the next one. But before the end of the day, that client that you needed questions on, they're getting back to you. It's answered, done. Month is reconciled. That builds efficiencies, and that's how I try to run and that's how to try how I run. That's how I run my office. Another analogy, how do I work with my clients using accounting power and with the question of, well, what to use? Think of it this way. Um, would you go into your kitchen at home or at your office, unplug your Krupp's coffee maker, you know, the little, you know, single cup coffee maker, put it in the car, drive it over to Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, and hand it to the person across the counter and say, make me a cup of coffee? It sounds ridiculous. Well, basically, that's how we're running our practice. Most of the accounts I know run their practice. The clients are in control. They're taking tools and pieces of software and things that they bought that, they're, that they use, and then they hand it over to us and say, do this, do that. Well, basically, that's a very good, again, analogy of, asking Starbucks to make a, a cup of coffee with, the, your own, with their own equipment. Uh, my next slide. The topic of payroll. So many people ask me, why do you do payroll? And I go, I want to ask you, why don't you do payroll? I get a you know, literally different. The, big, the most common answer is, and it frankly comes down to, you know, people are, you know, we, we have egos and we have pride. People say they, don't understand, they just don't understand it. Um, and, and so whenever people really don't understand something, they make up excuses like, oh, it's too difficult, it's too time-consuming, the liability, all these different stories. Well, I can tell you I've been doing live payroll since the late 80s. The reason I got into live payroll is because uh, the companies back then, they're not as good as they were are now. I mean, the companies that are out there now, ADP Paychecks, they do a fine job. I'm not going to say they don't. Um, but the companies that were out there were doing horrible jobs. And again, you were leaving it in the hands of your client. They would call in new employees. Um, say it was a restaurant, and they call in, call in a new waiter or waitress, and they didn't put any tips on. Next thing you know, they, you know, they're on the books for weeks without under the minimum wage with no tips because you're leaving things in the hands of the clients to set up and establish. All right? What is payroll to me? Most importantly, it's a profit center. Why should they be paying some third-party vendor when they could be paying me? Um, it gives you more client touches, all right? If you, if you have uh, these small businesses I deal with, 90, 85, 90% of them, they process payroll on a weekly basis. So someone in my office is talking to these clients every single week. You're touching them every single week. You're creating a bond that you are their go-to person now. I can say, I mean, my father-in-law now, he's in his early 70s. That's why my merge is in place because he's slowly, you know, uh, you know, more than slowly working towards retirement, but he has clients that he has been taking care of for over 40 years. All right, I myself still have the very first client that I brought into the firm in 1986 because you become that strategic, you know, reliable, you know, business partner with them. And then why do I do payroll? Really efficiency. What do I mean by that? At least in my own opinion. Um, the most difficult entry, one of the most difficult entries and things to deal with is payroll when you're doing write-up, integrating the payroll data into your accounting system. Now, most people today, um, I still some people who, who don't do it, who don't even use the bank rec functions in the software they're using, but most people at least do. But to do that, that means every single check that was issued has to be entered into the system to properly use the you know, electronic bank rec features. So guess what? When I do this, when I do the payroll with my software, it automatically posts into the system. 
And with that, even more so, not just the payroll, but all the you know all the GL entries, all of the proper uh, uh, tax postings, but the tax payments themselves. All right, so even the tax payments, you know, the system posts the liability into the uh, accrued taxes payable accounts, and then it posts the payments against the correct uh, GL accounts. Uh, in other systems I used, it was a very, very manual system. That is the beauty uh, about the, you know, doing payroll today. Um, how do I get my clients to let me do it? Well, uh, the line is, I said, well, if you want somebody else to do your payroll, then you're basically paying two times to do your payroll. And they look at me funny, like I have two heads. What do you mean by that? So, I mean, basically, and the next question is how do I bill, and I'll get into that, but most of my clients I do flat fee billing with. That's what small clients like and want. Um, so what does that mean in terms of uh, payroll? It means that I compile or come up with my flat fee based upon the volume of work the client has. How many transactions? How many deposits? How, more so, how many debits? How many uh, debit cards? How many checks are written? So. The simple explanation is fine. You go pay another company to process your payroll. Now you're going to pay me a higher bookkeeping accounting fee to integrate all that data into your system. So in effect, in effect you're paying twice for it. They, they kind of like that real quick. And then also on the concept of, about changing systems and how do you get them to move over, um, of course, it's built into your flat fee. But I tell them, I will provide you this bookkeeping accounting system, this electronic checkbook for free, no additional charge. Clients love that word. We all know that. So, oh, you do? I don't have to pay for this? I don't have to have that debit come out of my account every every month to pay for it? So, um, how do I bill for payroll? I really do compel um, two different ways, though. Uh, as I mentioned, flat fee. You know, I have some clients. They have four to six payroll, four to six employees for as long as they've been my client. So I can flat fee bill them for that because I know exactly what I'm facing. You have certain clients, though, that are seasonal. You know, summer comes, and all of a sudden, they're up to 20, 25 employees, and then in, in non-season, they're down to eight. Those I bill um, just like a regular payroll processor does. Uh, weekly payroll, $15 plus uh, a dollar a check, bi-weekly or semi-monthly, $25 a payroll run plus a dollar a check. And the system auto bills for you. It goes into the client's account just like ADP and Paychex does, and it takes their fees out. I even use it for my flat fee billing. So on the first of the month, this client pays me $600 first of the month um, through payroll solution, through through a, a payroll release, goes in, takes the money, puts it in my account. I have no AR headaches because just like everybody else in the world, we get auto paid. How hard is doing payroll? That's the biggest fallacy that people think it's a difficult thing. Sure, back in the 80s when I started, it was a lot more difficult. If you saw our office, we had rows and rows of uh, shelves on the wall with stacks of checks because we, there was no such thing as micro-encoded checks. I had to have separate check stock for every client that I did payroll for. Not a nightmare, but just a, a big hassle. Um, technology has grown today where doing payroll is as easy as playing Angry Birds or playing Candy Crush or playing Trivia Crack or anything else you do on your smartphone or tablet. That's how easy doing payroll is. Literally, I'm in New Jersey. I have sat on the beaches of New Jersey and processed clients' payroll while sitting on the beach on my iPad. That is how easy it is to do because it is a fully automated system. All right? I, for anybody that tells me anything different, I, it, it's just simply not true. All right? This, the, you're using technology to do manual processes of yesteryear, all right? There's still a few clients in my area that I literally, I mean, today was Thursday. Today was my payroll, uh, courier day. All small businesses, they like getting paid on Friday. So Thursday, I have a retired police chief who comes to my office in the morning, picks up a dozen, two dozen payrolls, delivers them within the area and drops them off for me because there's still clients I couldn't get to convert yet. I still do the like payroll, but because I've been doing it since the 80s and dropping off pressure seal checks that they just hand out, we haven't gotten them moved over yet. But new clients coming in, how do we work with them? First, we urge them all on direct deposit. If you can't get everybody on direct deposit because of, the, say, the type of clients they have, urge them to use debit cards. All right, that's free. No, but they don't charge for that. And in, in processing the system, it's like processing another direct deposit. Very simple. 
Or, I mean, there's some clients that still want that traditional check. Well, do you know how the system works? Very easily. After um, inputting the payroll, authorizing it, calculating it, and finalizing it, several mouse clicks, you click email checks to client. They get a password protected PDF of all the check images. They put blank check stock into their printer, hit print, payroll's delivered. That's how easy it is. They love you for it because they're not waiting for the mail to arrive. They're not paying for mail charges. They're not paying for courier charges. You're making it easy and efficient for them. So payroll is easy, and it makes your accounting and bookkeeping easier. And then finally he says, why is it speed up my processes? I think I covered that already. The concept that you know, getting the data out of ADP and paychecks, in my opinion, is a bear. You have to sit and get their data. Every payroll processing company, the reports are in different formats. The data is in different formats, and you got to figure out on a client-by-client -client basis how to get that data into our system. Now, I simply go in, in accounting relief. I go up to integration, payroll, and I just click the current date and bring in all the payroll with tax payments right up to that date. The system, when I, I use the word fully automated, okay, asterisk, legal disclaimer. Are there some manual processes? Sure, there's a couple. Um, you know, certain third-party vendor check. You know, vendors need to get a check printed, but even like state uh, uh, imposed child support, that's all electronic payment goes out automatically. Direct deposit created and gone out automatically. You know, when I left my old system, there were so many manual processes. Um, sure, it said it does EFTPS for the tax payments. Well, no, it created the EFTPS file. You then had to make sure you had the EFTPS batch filing software to compile all those files and transmit them at the end of the day. So back then, I can understand people hesitating to do payroll because there were multiple steps. There were manual processes. All right. Even today, uh, the package I left, which was uh, CSA, Creative Solutions, they still do, it's not an automated system. You have to actually hire one of their partners called Intercept to process the uh, direct deposits and process all the tax payments. So the system doesn't do it themselves. And again, I said I was at the users conference last week, and, and it hit me in talking to some of my other colleagues, other people I've known and, and seen them there for years. And the difference is, is other places are strictly – other companies like Thomson Reuters, like Intuit, they are strictly software companies. They provide you software. They try to give you training on this is how it works, but that's really where it ends. Accountants world, for them to give you this fully automated system, there's software, and that's what we're subscribing to, but there's people behind the software. All right, so those processes we're talking about, all those tax payments, the, uh, the direct deposits, they have staff there making sure that's all working on our behalf. That's what we're paying for. So again, sure, at the end of a quarter, um, payroll, you know, payroll compliance, quarterly filing, it's all automated. It just automatically – you set it, and it's automatically set up for e-filing. Not to mention, but you're also setting the system so that when you process things, it automatically copies to their, to their cloud cabinet. So in terms of archiving, it's there. Same with the write-up program. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, when I go to close the month, you set it up where it goes and says, all right, copy these predefined set of reports into the cloud cabinet. Done. So archiving is already handled for you. Um, even now, we're processing payroll. You you set the predefined set of reports that, that a client gets. You click one mouse button, email client reports. They're all sitting in their inbox. You know, beautiful cover page. All the reports that you you know that you've determined they're the ones that they want to see. Um, payroll is a breeze. It's a profit center. It makes up 15% of my revenue. And you know, I don't even have a, a dedicated person. I have a payroll lead, if you want to say, one person who watches the system overall. But I do some live payrolls. Everybody who processes, I like the people who are doing the write-up for the client to actually do the payroll for the client. Again, that bond, the, the, the more the client touches, it, it's you know, you're know you creating things that you, you actually cannot pay for that. Next slide. All right. Let's talk about flat fee billing. I mentioned that before. How do I bill my clients? In general, I mean, clients like to be flat fee billed. I mean, as I said, this is my 30th tax season. We've been doing this work long enough that when you look at a client's set of records, you basically will know how much time it's going to take you, on average, because there's always difficult clients, 
how many how much time on average based on the volume of transactions will it take you to get this work done you bill in you know enough uh, put a little cushion in for discussion time but here you go 300 400 500 a month here's my flat fee um, it's made up of three components um, accounting and bookkeeping all right and that goes from just after the fact to you know bill pay and CFO services um, tax planning tax prep and payroll those are the basic three components that you put up on on the bill and like I said I use the payroll relief to audit debit their their uh, their fee the first of every month no accounts receivable problems the only accounts receivable problems I have is during tax season people you know getting their tax getting their returns getting it done you know I can honestly I'm sure you all agree with me I have I can think of three or four right off the right off the bat that you know when I get paid for last year's return when they're dropping off this year's work so you know but your your, your accounts receivable from your from your bread and butter your small business clients it doesn't exist at least in in, in that I mean, you tell them, listen, you, your, your insurance comes out automatically. Your taxes are paid automatically. Why can't I get paid automatically? So um, then you talk about you know, problems it solves, advantages. These small business clients, it, it, cash flow is everything to them. They, they're hesitant and sometimes will go off and make horrible mistakes that we got to spend hours fixing later when they're dealing with an accountant that they pick up the phone and the meter starts running. Sure, any new client coming through the door is a little more needy than the average client. Once you get them set up and in a system that runs, I don't hear from them. I have some of my most highest paying clients, clients that pay me, you know, through all the services and everything I do, twenty plus thousand dollars a year. I reach out to them. Hey doc, hey, you know, you want to get together for dinner, you want to review anything? Nope, Jim, everything's running great. Thanks. Why? Because they know if they have a quick question, they shoot me an email. Most of emails today, even more than calls, shoot me a quick email, they get answered, and not a bill goes along with it. So it runs. Um, and like I said before, uh, software, no charge. Everybody loves for free. All right, um, you, you bill it that way. It just you just you know put it right into their you know into their fee. But when we're talking about billing, we all have to also I think have to talk about profitability. Profitability as well as revenue in, in general. I mean, tell me, what would you rather have? A six hundred thousand dollar firm where you keep fifty percent of the pro of, of of the revenue comes in. You have a fifty percent total overhead, and you keep fifty percent. Or would you like a one million dollar practice where you get to keep twenty? All right, because I know a lot of those. I'm closer to the first example where I keep half of what comes through the door. All right. Too many account, too many clients. Everybody always focuses at the gross, gross dollars. You need to focus on costs, also efficiencies, and what resolves as profit at the end of the day. So when I say I've increased my profit 35 percent over the last three years, I think it's actually a little higher than that. But I didn't want to, you know, say something that I couldn't prove on paper. It comes from sure I've gotten more clients, but mainly is because I don't have to hire more staff. I had one staff member, you know, years ago that just uh, retired and moved on, and I didn't have to replace them. And we're working as efficient as ever because of the tools that we're using. So we're making money by becoming more and more profitable. Profitability doesn't come only just from increasing revenue, but from reducing costs. So you need to do both. You need to drive revenue, but you need to work smarter, not harder. Technology allows us to work smarter. You know. Um, what are what are our two highest line items? Look at our own financial statements for your office. What are the two highest? Occupancy and payroll. Well, occupancy, you know, our rent or or mortgage, whatever it is, is going to be what it is. You know, it varies by what geographical, you know, what territory where you're at. But but your payroll, your salary and wages, you know, that's the biggest thing with healthcare costs. So everything going, it just keeps going up and up and up. So wouldn't you rather have a much more streamlined, uh, efficient staff? that you could actually pay better than having a lot more people around, that's the way I've structured my, my, my uh, office. And by doing that, I'm a lot more profitable. So um, it, it's, it's a decision that we all have to make at a time. And, and again, I urge you to sit back and evaluate your practices and do it at a time 
when, again, you're not being forced into doing things, when you could sit back and actually look at what's going on. It, it's time that, you know, step one, take back control of your clients. Don't let them control you. Take back control of your firm. Don't let your staff control you. Don't let them dictate how your office is run. Trust me. I mean, yeah, there's going to be pushback, but they're looking for you to be a leader. They're looking for you to lead the office. You know, and you show show them that, you know, that's what you're doing is being a leader and not just changing for the sake of changing. They come around. And what does it allow you to do? Take back control of your life. Leading the life that you want to lead, not one that's totally dictated by your schedule at the office. Like Lenny said, people, you know, they're laughing at me. I mean, during during where I have clients and friends, not friends, uh, not clients, friends at other accountants that, oh, it's October, first week, two weeks of October. We're swamped with, you know, getting these extensions done. I was on a cruise. I just don't put up with extensions. The work is in. We get it done. Um, you know, I know you don't like saying you don't want to turn any work away, but that old adage that, you know, 20% of your clients give you 80% of your headaches is absolutely true. And if some clients, you have to just say, sorry, I think you'll be better off served by another firm. Either that or you you raise their prices, you know, and make it worth your while. But you can't live in fear of like, oh, they're going to leave. Well, some of them they should. You you should hope that they leave. Or if they if they do, great. If they don't, they come around and start doing it the the better way. So, you know, what does this do? It allows you to free your time up to help your clients now, rather than just processing work for them. I mean, a, a debate I had, a, a heated debate with another accountant was, well, I get I make a hell of a lot of money because I get paid to fix everybody's QuickBooks errors. I said. Then what do you look? You're looked at by that client as a necessary evil. You're not looked at as a strategic business partner. I have so many clients; they do not, you know, literally do anything, on, you know, major that is, without it before touching base with me, me getting an email. Hey Jim, what do you think about this? That is what you build when you start building this relationship with your clients, and because you're not spending all their time playing catch up, you're not spending all your time processing. You're spending time now going to the clients, looking how you can serve them better, how you can sell them more services, how you can do more planning services for them. That's what we're talking about. So, you know, the, the thing is how to, you know, how to answer today's webinar thing, you know, how did I become more profitable? You know, I did it by raising revenue, but I did it mostly by using technology over people. I mean I have to say, I'm, I, one of the things I love, I'm a history guy. I love watching, you know, I think we have so much to learn from history. And I'm always amazed when I watch shows about the Titanic. And you look at the Harland and Wolf uh, shipyards where the, where the ship was built and designed. And they show you this hall. And it's an, it was a drafting hall where, where table after table after table of draftsmen would sit there and work on the plans in, in by hand in, in exacting detail. And I think about how the accounting uh, uh, offices and accounting departments of yesteryear had to look like the same thing. Just rows and rows and rows of desks and people painstakingly doing so many manual processes. And I think of today, where I am today with simple PC power. I'm not talking about having mega you know, syst uh, computing systems. Right now with the use of the cloud, you're taking a desktop PC and an, a high-speed internet connection and an internet browser and you're, that's how you're getting your work. And as I told you, even the one of the biggies in the industry, Thomson Reuters, is heading exactly in that direction, finally. So they realized it. So I look back and see how things were done, and I look at how things are done today. Sit back and find, where are you right now? Sit back and analyze your firm. Where am I doing this? Listen, ask yourself the own, your own a question. Like I urge you to ask your clients and ask your staff. Ask yourself, where do I have pain? What's bothering me? then proactively look for ways to fix it. And that's what I, that's what I did when I found accounting, Accountants World. I proactively went out and looked because I was fed up with the way I was doing things. And, you know, I'm, I, for me, there was no looking back. Many people ask me, you know, um, I've already talked to other, you know, people one-on-one -on -one about products. And they say, why, why, why are you doing this? And I'm flat out. I said, you know what? Just like I want to be a strategic partner to my clients and, and be invaluable to them, 
I want that same relationship with my software provider. All right, I want them to become better and better and better. As I mentioned, bank feeds, that wasn't around a year ago. Now automatically through the bank feed function, transactions appear in our systems. You're limiting hand data entry. That's efficiency. Now that wasn't something that I knew about and said, hey, accountants world, uh, you, know, you should put this in. They found it and they implemented it into the system. The new mobile uploads of, of, of invoices. These are all things that they're out constantly searching for better the ways to make their product better or for our behalf. I want to be a part of that. The other thing is you're dealing with a company that is that listens. You know how many times I sit and shoot off an email, hey guys, the system's great, but what if? All right? They're they have accountants there. Their program is they have accountants, but we're the ones in the trenches doing the work. They're extremely receptive of hearing, listen, the system's great, but it would be better if it did this. And I can tell you that many of my suggestions, not only mine, my staffs who put it in through me, go in and they get implemented because the accounts was like, you know what, that's a great idea. So you got to look at, you know, not just purchasing software, but who are you partnering with in software? That's really the decision you're making. Uh, Len, I think I've said all I have to go over. Jim, I appreciate, um, you know, your, uh, your insights and everything that you just said. Um, so hang on the phone because uh, we may get back to you in a minute. But first, um, you described the software. I'm sure everyone on the phone wants to know a little bit more about it and pricing. So let's take a few seconds to go through that, okay? We're going to go through our products and what the pricing is so everyone has an idea about that. First, as you heard from Jim how profitable payroll is, is I want to tell you about our product called Payroll Relief. And just remember, as Jim was mentioning before, in terms of efficiencies, all our products are built for the cloud and they work seamlessly together. Payroll relief, right now we process over $3 billion in transactions per year. And we are only one of a handful of companies that have passed the IRS assurance testing system. I believe there are about 35 of them in the country. That's how good and state-of-the-art product we produce. And Three years in a running from 2.12 to 2.14, the CPA practice advisor gave us their, their highest ratings. And well, last Len, week... Len, i got to interrupt you. You're, you're, you're wrong there. I just got my CPA practice advisor in the mail today. Right. 2015, five stars. So, and that's at the bottom left. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry I told you that. But yeah, <laughs> five, so, so four years running. Four years running, and that's why we're not accountants. <laughs> but yes, four years in running, we are five stars, the highest rated, um, and that's because of all the features and all the benefits that uh, Jim just detailed for you. So, what's the pricing? We price per check. We go by volume. We don't price by how many clients you have. So if you have a lot of little clients, we're not going to have a flat fee for them. It's just by the amount of checks. And we want you to produce volume. We want you to do as many checks as possible. And what we'll charge you is anywhere from $0.40 cents to $1.25 a check. And that's all inclusive. No additional fees for W-2s at 1099s. No additional fees for direct deposits. And support is included at no additional cost. We've actually surveyed our client base for, uh, for people that use payroll relief, and conservatively, we asked them how much per check are they making, and the numbers that came back were anywhere from 3 to $5 per check, with most of them, or many of them, coming back a lot more. So as Jim detailed before, payroll is a profitable area. For some of you that qualify on the phone, we do have first year pricing for payroll relief. For those of you who want to get involved or have a practice going right now, we do have a first year special, and that is for fourteen ninety five. Okay, if you qualify, you can run, you know you can run, and we'll, the sales reps will actually go through this with you. How many checks you can run, so you can really start growing your practice. And again, for fourteen ninety five, no additional fees for the W twos. 1099s, we don't charge for direct deposits. We give your, your, your employees and the people using the system unlimited portals for them to actually access. So everything is inclusive and it's so cost effective. And as always, support is included, no additional charge. Next, accounting power. 
Accounting power comes in two versions. Unlimited, if you want to collaborate with your clients, it's $15.95. If you want to use it just for write-up, it's $9.95. Power practice, those are all our products built on one platform with one single login for you and your clients, and that consists of accounting power, including the unlimited version, after-the-fact payroll, compliance for after-the-fact e-filing, cloud cabinet, which is so important because Jim also talked about this, is that when you're done doing your work, one click of a button, all your reports, all your communication with your clients automatically go into the cloud cabinet. It's a secure document management system. Your clients are alerted. You're done. Efficiency time is done. You know, time is reduced. Practice Relief is a time and billing program. We'll also get a directory listing to increase your web presence so when someone searches for you, you have a better chance of coming up in the search. And Website Relief, we provide a professional website. We'll maintain the, uh, the updates in turn, making sure that you're kept current. Pricing for power practice, which is the accounting after the fact, cloud cabinet, pra uh, the uh, practice relief, it's all Twenty-one ninety-five a year or two twenty a month. That's it. So, with that said, let's see if we have any questions. I also want to. Jim was generous enough. I'm going to open up a poll question. Jim was generous enough to offer this to the attendees of this uh, session, and that is, and then we'll get to a couple of questions. There are a few here. I know we're running out of time, so we can't answer a lot. But the poll is as follows. Jim has been gracious enough to say, you know what? If someone wants to call him. For a 10-minute conversation, he's more than willing to take your call, no charge at all. So if you'd like that, you can, uh, you can ask Jim or you can apply for that. We're going to take a certain amount of people. So if you do that, you have, um, we'll get you in touch with Jim. There are also some other options up there. I'm sure you have a lot of questions in terms of what the products can do. Um, in which case, we can answer them. We can give you a one-on-one -on -one demonstration. You don't leave your office. It'll be over the web, over the cloud. You can see the power of the technology. And I know many of you on the phone here have also seen presentations of our services and you wanted to hear someone um, who actually uses them to hear their experience. So if you want to get started, just let us know also. So those are your options. And with that said, Jim, we have a, uh, time for a couple of questions here. One of them is, um, and I can answer part of this. Accounting power may not uh, does not have a lot of APIs for the end users. So how do you handle that if someone says, "Hey, I need it. My client needs an API in order to use. Um, you know, can they use it, or how would they use accounting power if there's not an API?" Right, if I'm if I'm getting your question correctly, and when you talk about API, you're talking about interfacing with other programs, other other systems. Point of sale or something um, point like of that. Sale, exactly. What what I have found over my years of doing this is technology is great, but when you have uh, uh, many different platforms, many different vendors, they don't all get along and talk together nicely. So anytime I see programs out there that say, "Oh, I uh, we integrate with QuickBooks, we do this," well, you sit there, you work it, it doesn't come over the way you want it, and it, it's to me not efficient. You spend more time cleaning up and correcting it than doing it. So how do I run that? You know, the way I say is that most of my clients keep two sets of books. You know, I know that sounds funny. They have one piece of software that they run their practice on, which is uh, if it's a gas station, it's service station master. If it's a dental practice, it's easy dental. That's where they're tracking all of their client activity. But they're all cash bases. So what do you need in your accounting system? What, what came in? You don't really care who paid you, who owes you what. That's all in your point of sale. That's all in, the, in your, your own practice system. Your accounting system, that other piece of software, records deposits. Do, you, do I believe you need that level of detail in two different places? Absolutely not. And every program out there, the more data you shove into it, the more it's going to get – it slows down. So in your accounting system for our cash basis clients, you need, I make you – know, I'll get from that point of sale system – the client emails me or I have my own login to their POS system and I make one monthly revenue entry. No need to have all this excessive detail in the accounting system when they already have it in the POS system. That's the way I handle it. 
Okay, Jim, thank you. Um, I'll take the next one, and that was a pricing question regarding accounting power. That is for unlimited clients, so it's not per client. That pricing was for unlimited amount of clients. Um, Jim, this, payroll pricing versus ADP and paychecks, what would you say, do you have a, a ballpark figure or something? Oh, I, I could tell you that easily. Um, okay. One, one, of my, one of my realtor clients. Um, most of the, almost everybody in their office is 1099 realtors, except for her, the the broker, the owner of the practice, the owner of the firm, as well as their one clerical person who answered the phones. They were paying ADP thirty five dollars a week for their payroll runs, thirty five dollars a week. It's so simple. I said to the to the, to the broker, I'll do it for fifty dollars a month, and and when I mean I spend less than five minutes a month doing it. It, it's it's ridiculous, and now it's fully integrated into my system. So I like I said, I know where people are out there getting a quote and saying, you know, oh they'll do it for thirty five dollars. Yeah, thirty five dollars per processing. So this system allows us to be so much more competitive than the big people, and you don't have to be. I mean, it all depends on how you want to work with your clients. You could sit and charge very similar rates, and that's just even more profit in your pocket. But when I look at the the time savings from uh, uh, the data entry part, that full integration, I, I look at it, yeah, I'm going to make money on it, not, not ridiculous like, like ADP or Paychex does, but you know, I'm going to pass some of that efficiency savings on to my client as well. So anytime, because they, they get bombarded. I have clients that tell me, I can't, they can't even walk into their bank without the bank saying, oh, can we do your payroll? So that's how lucrative it is. So you, you, you don't want to charge you know, like right up to what they're charging. You want to be under because... That you know, clients will see that they'll recognize that and they'll value you more, knowing that oh, they're charging me thirty-five dollars a payroll run, and your, yours is coming out to be you know twenty-five, twenty, and still being overly excessively profitable because of how easy it is to process the payroll. Okay, um, we've been here on here for an hour. We said be now. We don't want to take anyone any more time than we have. Um, I'm assuming that based on you know the feedback that I'm seeing on the screen here and also um, the type of job that Jim did, I know this has been helpful. We appreciate your time. Um, we have the information where everyone wants to um, get some answers, uh, questions answered and move to the next step. We will be in contact with you. Jim, as always, thanks so much for doing a tremendous job. And for everyone out there, we will get back to you and we appreciate your time and that is our contact information. So enjoy the rest of your day and Jim, thank you so much again for uh, doing such a super job, okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome.